Good morning. How's it going? Well, who was there for uh, the keynote this morning? Mostly everybody. You're not tired to listen to me? You want more? It's okay, I'm not going to talk for full three hours. I'm going to talk for 15, 20 minutes maximum. Uh, this workshop is a kind of workshop ish slash hackathon slash you can code. It's not going to be a kind of talk during that three hours. So, um, for those of you, is there any people that were not there this morning? Shame on you. Can't ask them to go down right now. No, it's okay. Uh, for those of you that weren't out there, uh, my name is Lily Carver. You can call me Fred. Uh, I'm a senior technical evangelist at Mozilla. So what does that mean? My job is to uh, give love to developers. So help them be successful with Firefox OS, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If I talk too fast, if you don't understand something, yeah, I need to slow it down a little bit. So if I if I talk too fast, uh, let me know. If you don't understand something, uh, I have a new translator with yeah. me. So uh, Alex, 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 Alejandro, Alejandro, from OG. So Alejandro uh, will help me, and uh, feel free if you're on Twitter to use at Farker to tweet about good, bad, or stupid things that I'm saying in the next three hours. I'm going to put those slides also in the recording of the small presentation online on autofcomfortzone.net. But as I said, that's not going to be just about presentation. So what's going to happen for the next three hours? Don't look at the time, it's totally wrong. But uh, for the next 15 to 30 minutes maximum, I'm going to talk. I'm going to introduce you the app manager for those that were not there, the simulator, how you can you use the developer tools to be able to start your Firefox OS application. After this, that's going to be coding. So you need your computer, or you need to team up with someone that has a computer, because the idea is not me teaching you for three hours how to build Firefox OS. I still think that the best way to learn is to do it yourself. So if you already have a HTML application, if you already have a phone gap application, it's the time to port that application because I'm there to help you. We have other people like Kondo, uh, know Firefox as well. I'm supposed to have some people from the Mexico Muslim community coming really soon that are uh, super expert on Firefox OS platform. That's going to be there too. So it's the time for you to try it to have the manifest file, to fail, to succeed, to, it's the time to do it right now. And we're going to take some time at the end of the workshop to give you some time to demo your application. So you're going to come here in front of everybody. I know it's scary. But you're going to do it because I have 10 of those phones, those playing devices, that I'm going to give to the people that will show their application. So if there is more than 10 people, I will do a drop. If there is less than 10 people, I can come back with those songs at home. And I don't want to. I want to give you those songs. The idea, because when I do those kind of workshop accounts, we have a full day, and it's not even enough for to polish what you want to do to port your application. So because we only have like three hours, I'm not expecting people to show a full fledged app in front of the people. I want you to show what you did, what didn't work. Maybe you just write to publish something, to push something in the C layer, and it's working, but it's just an LOL application. Or maybe you want to show me what you did, what you already have, your HTML application, even if it's not working with Firefox OS right now. Again, because we have limited uh, amount of time. Before we do anything else, I would like to keep in touch with you. I know I put my email, Twitter, Facebook, but I would like to keep in touch about that workshop. So go to that URL, peterpad.mozilla.org dash uh, slash congresso f, capital F, X, capital O, S. This is a long URL. Sorry about that. I should have like 
showing that URL. But go there, and I would like you to have your um, full name and email address. And now, don't be worried. I'm not going to spam you. I'm going to send you one email, probably next week. One email to follow up with you. To be sure that we are connected, to be sure that I'm going to be there to help you. So my goal is to help you support your application to Firefox OS because, of course, after that workshop, we're going to continue to work on that application. And I want to be sure that I'm going to be there to help you. And I want to be sure that I know when you're going to publish those applications to the marketplace. Because I want those, I want to see those applications to the marketplace. I want to tell people that, hey, I went to Mexico City and look at all the good applications that I got after that workshop. So go there, I'm not going to spam you, I'm going to use your email once, I'm not going to share your email with anybody, go to that Peter tab, add your email and name there. If you don't feel comfortable to do so, my email is going to be at the end of the presentation, feel free to send me an email. If you don't want to hear about me at all, don't do it. But that would be nice to keep in touch. I was talking about, uh, for people that were there at my talk this morning, there's too many things you have to do to be able to work on Firefox OS so application. You need to have Firefox. So it's even shorter to just use Google Bing or whatever search engine to just search for download Firefox, but the link is there. J.MP slash download Firefox with a capital F. So you don't have a choice because the app manager is in Firefox, the developer tools that you're going to use to debug your application is in Firefox. But it's good. No matter your platform, Windows, OS X, Linux, you can use Firefox. The second link is to download the Firefox OS C layer. So again, j.mp fx OSS, so actually OS later, so with S. Again, it's case sensitive. You go there because you already have the app manager in Firefox. So the main tool is already there. But because you don't have real device right now, you're going to need the simulator to be sure that you're going to be able to debug and test your application. Also, those 10 devices, we can use them today. So uh, people that want to test on a real device, that want to play with Firefox OS, we may have to charge them, but they're going to be there, they're going to be available for the next three hours. And after, some of lucky people in the room will go back home with those devices. So I will put the link back after, or take a picture quickly, because I will change to a new slide. So, there is some room. Uh, I'm a really friendly people, so that's not going to be that terrible. So the idea is to uh, do it alone or with a team. Uh, remember, we only have like less than three hours to port application. So people that don't have HTML or PhoneGap application, you can create a new one if you want. But of course, you won't finish your application after the three hours. If you already have an application, you can again work on a working team. The idea, the main idea, I won't kick people out if you don't have any application right now. But the main idea of that workshop slash hackathon was mostly to help people to port your actual HTML or phone gap application to the platform, to the Firefox OS platform. And the third rule, the most important of all the rule, have fun. If you don't have fun for the next three hours, leave that room. That's not going to be interesting. So have fun. Uh, you're developers, you work with codes, you work with HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Make it your workshop, make it your hackathon. Feel free to ask questions. I'm there to help. There's other people there to help. We can have other people that will be there to help also. So feel free to take that time for you. But have a good moment, have a good time. It's your time. So let me do a small demonstration about the app manager and the developer tools. And this is basically all the knowledge you know to be able to uh, start to debug or work on your application. Does that make sense yet? Yes? No? Everybody's sleeping? You don't understand? Entendieron lo que dijo Fred? Levanten la mano quien entendió lo que dijo Fred? Okay, ¿y por qué no contestan? Yes. Is it the people that did not understand? 
Es la gente que sí. The, the people that do understand. Mm. They do understand. Okay, few. I was afraid that all the people that raised their hand was people that did not understand. I said, oh my God, next time I need to learn Spanish. So, uh, for those of you that were there, there this morning, that may have some part that I will repeat, but it's mostly for people that were not there. So, as I said, you already have what we call the App Manager in Firefox. So, to open the App Manager, of course, you have to, uh, you need to have Firefox installed. I'm going to go in Tool. And I'm going to go in uh, Web Developers, and I'm going to have that option called the App Manager. When I click App Manager, the App Manager will open, and this is basically uh, the place you're going to manage all your application you want to publish, uh, to a, you want to push to your phone, application you want to test, application you want to debug. So in my case, as I told you, you don't really need a, you don't need a real device to create a Firefox OS application for some API like I uh, was showing the ambient light status th this morning, you, uh, the ambient light sensor, you won't have the choice to use a real device, but most of the application, you're going to be able to do this with the simulator. So what I'm going to do, I have two options right there. Have package app or have hosted app. In the case of hosted application, those are the application that you put on your own server, so you can have them by putting the link to your application. But mostly what you're going to do right now, even if you don't want to create a package application, since your application will probably sit on your hard disk on your computer, you can use the package app. So you don't have to build a zip file. You just need to point to the folder where you have your uh, manifest.webapp file. So in my case, I'm going to use uh, a free um, application, an open source application that are available on GitHub, the Firefox OS Marketplace. If you click open on it, that's going to have my application to the marketplace. And at that time, that application is there so I can publish it to, I can push that application to the simulator or to a real device by, by connecting on USB. So right now, we'll use the simulator. So I have a new version installed on my computer. 1.2, sorry, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 2.0. Oh, I will suggest you to download 1.3 when you're going to install the simulator because 1.2 is not available anymore on the link I put on the site, and 1.3 is not too advanced to because right now most of the people are using 1.1, uh, and you need at minimum 1.2 to be able to use the app manager. So I'm going to start the simulator. So this is basically Firefox OS running in the simulator. So what I'm going to do, I can just uh, push my application to the simulator. Let me scroll a little bit. And you're going to see that I have that application right now installed. So it's not the most sexiest application you will ever see. But this is a good application to understand how those APIs are working. I need to move it, move to the right. Oh, yeah, I will move it a little bit yeah. to the right. Thanks. So what I'm going to do right now, when you build a web application, and it's the same for a Firefox OS application, there is usually a couple of problems you can get, you can, you can get into, and it's basically the same for any application. You will either have a UI issue, so something you created with CSS, uh, something, some HTML element that is not displayed correctly or that is not displayed at this, the good place. So you need to debug your application. You need to test it. And the second thing will probably be on the logic side. So there is something wrong with JavaScript. You did something, it's not working, you don't get the result you were expecting, you may have issue, error, it may not work. So like any other web application, you're going to be able to use what we call the Firefox OS developer tool. So I'm not talking about Firebug, I'm talking about really tools that are inside Firefox. So if I want to debug any web application, I can go to Tools, Web Developers, and I can uh, open by using uh, Toggle Tools. So that will show me the tools that I have in my browser, in my case. What I want to do, I want to debug my application on the Firefox OS device. So I'm going to click Debug, and you're going to see the same tools that I had before. So let me change this a little bit. 
So you're going to have the console, so you're going to be able to see all the errors that your application may, uh, may have. You have the inspector, and the inspector is a really interesting function. So uh, it's probably the same kind of tools that you use on any other browsers. So the inspector, what is great is that even on Firefox OS, I can click that little uh, pick an element from page button. If I click on it, I'm going to be able with my mouse to select anything on my Firefox OS application. And if you don't see it, my tools just selected the line where the button is in my code. So it's really interesting to find from the UI to the code where sometimes you may use an application that you did not create or maybe you created something a couple of months ago you just don't remember. It's always easier to debug like this. So there is that inspector team that gives you a proper view on the HTML and you're going to have the CSS of each element on the right. And if you still keep that pick tools open, as you can see, look in the simulator. As I move to different elements, you're going to see where those elements are on the application. So really handy tools to debug the UI, to know what's happening, to find things in the code more easily. A second thing that will happen probably is, uh, as I told you, any JavaScript problem. So you have the debuggers. So you're gonna, you can see that on my application right now, I load four JavaScript files. The main one for the bullet plate is the webhap.js. So if I try, I don't know, if I go to the dial, I can put a breakpoint. So what would happen is that with like any other programming language, any other ID that you use, if you put a breakpoint, the application will stop when we're gonna use this. So which one I use, I set on the Muzz Activity Dial. So if I click Dial, you're going to see that my application stopped. She stopped to the breakpoint when I, when I uh, did the new Muzz Activity. And on top of that, I'm going to be able to watch the value of different variables. So it's really a good tool if you want to debug JavaScript. So I can just say, okay, no, continue to run the application, don't stop at the breakpoint. And this is what the application should have done before I put the breakpoint. So another interesting tool, if you want to debug your application using JavaScript, so it's working well with any web application. But right now, because I use debug in the app manager, it's linked, it's linked to uh, my Firefox OS application. There's another issue that you may have by building your application, it's really with the UI. And if you're like me, you may not be good when it comes to UI. I know CSS, but I have no talent when it comes to create beautiful UI. So most of the time I'm struggling with doing something beautiful and I, I put some CSS and oh no, it's not working, oh no, it's not the color that I wanted. So right now the style editor is a little bit like, I would say, the debugger. So you have access to all the CSS file in my application. So right now I'm loading four CSS files. I can decide to unload some of those files. So you're gonna be you're gonna see the difference if I don't load one sheet. So sometimes it's good to have that information. I'm gonna be able also to just change uh, some part of the application by uh, doing some um, modification right in the code here. So if I go background color, I say red, you're gonna see that my application was updated. So a good way to test your application. Of course, the modification you will do in the style editor won't be saved. It's only for testing purpose. It's only, uh, it's only to, to try, uh, try and fail and, and really trying to see what's going on. So if I start again my application, the red background will disappear. But it's pretty good because right now, if I wanted to uh, change the background, I was not sure where to put it, and I had to Go back to, uh, in my case, I'm using Sublime. Go back to Sublime, find, find the CSS style sheet, have my background color, save the file, update the application to the Firefox simulator, reopen the, the application. I'm surprised my code was not good. 
So it's a long process. So what is great is that I'm saving a lot of time by doing this in the style editor. And what is great is that, okay, I did my modification. Right now, I know where it is. I just, just can copy paste my code and uh, put it in my application and that's gonna be good for the next time. Uh, I will skip the shader editor because you may not use it right now. There is also another tool, the profiler, because uh, I was wrong at the beginning when I said there is mostly two issues that you have. Of course, there is the UI, there is the logic uh, in terms of like any JavaScript error, but at some point you may find that your application is taking too much time. It's really slow. And uh, it's really important to create, optimize, really good application with Firefox OS. Because yes, we did a great job with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript on low-end devices. But keep in mind that there are low-end devices. And you may have access to the Wi-Fi at the university. I don't know at home if your uh, internet connection is fast or not, but uh, I'm traveling a lot, and, and there's some places where the uh, Wi-Fi is uh, terrific. It's, it's amazing, it's so fast. And some other places where you have a lot of problems just to load a small text page. So think about those users. Think about those users that may not have the fastest connection, those users that may pay a lot to have those internet connections. So you want to optimize their, those application. And one of this is really about uh, what time does it takes to run those things. So I can start the profiler. I will run my application by a number, close this. I'll go back to my application. I'm gonna go, okay, pick a mage from the gallery. I don't have any mage, okay. Uh, I did a couple of things. Close the profiler, and it will give you a view about the time and the function, even the OS function that has been called. So in that case, I'm gonna be able to see, hey, is a function is called too often? Or that function should take like less than, like, I don't know, uh, one person of all the process that I did, but it's taking like forever, like 28 persons. There is probably something wrong there. So that's gonna help you to debug your application. And the last one is the scratch pad. So it's really just about uh, putting some JavaScript uh, that you want to, instead of always going back to your ID, I can just decide to uh, do some uh, LO JavaScript here, and I'm gonna run that thing and, oh, stupid friend. I don't know how to write simple JavaScript. So I'm gonna run this. <laughs> how, many, how many technical evangelists you need to run an alert in JavaScript? At least three times. So <laughs> uh, it's just if you want to debug stuff, if you want to uh, maybe create some JavaScript code to do some testing, or uh, to have some code just to see how it's working, but you don't want to add this in your code because it's just testing, or it's not something you're sure yet you want to add to your code, you can use the scratch pad. You're gonna be able to save uh, your code. You're gonna be able to save your file. And uh, it's great if you have some uh, testing files that you use in, in some of your application. You can just load them uh, by opening your JavaScript file and you're gonna be able to do this. So this is a really quick overview of the tools you have to debug your uh, Firefox OS application, but basically it's all you need. You need an ID, something to write HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and you need the app manager already in Firefox to be able to manage your application if you have to debug because you have any JavaScript issue, because you have any CSS issue. You can use those tools inside Firefox to debug your application. So it's why I really like Firefox OS because it's very really simple to start. How many of you use Cargo or PhoneGap to create uh, application? None of you? Okay, so if at some point you want to use Cargo or PhoneGap, just know that it's really not complicated. Uh, what is great for those of you that don't know Cargo and PhoneGap, actually it's a project on by Adobe. Uh, and it's basically a way to build HTML, CSS applications. So you use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but you can publish native applications to multiple platforms. So by using Cordova or PhoneGap, you're gonna be able to use, uh, create your apps using HTML, and those tools will prepare, will create the native version 
using iOS, using Java for uh, Android, using C Sharp for Windows Sound, and using HTML for Firefox OS. So that seems a little bit crazy to use uh, HTML framework that will generate an HTML application for an HTML platform. But if you only want to target Firefox OS, it may not be that soon. But if you want to publish on multiple platforms, instead of having to create a native application for each platform, PhoneGap and Cordova is a really good tool. They're really good tools because you're going to be able also to publish to Firefox OS right now. So that's it for the talking time. I told you I was not going to talk too much. Uh, I will put back the slide with the links so you can download whatever you need. Uh, feel free to, uh, after the workshop, uh, I'm going back home tomorrow, so I won't be uh, there for the rest of the conference, but uh, feel free to send me an email, uh, at mozilla.com, uh, on Twitter, at farber, uh, if we talk in person, Facebook, if you're on LinkedIn, Add me, feel free to add me. If you're looking for a great technical blog posts about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Firefox OS, Firefox, Firefox for Android, uh, every nice cool JavaScript library you're uh, creating or using at Mozilla, go on ax.mozilla.org. Uh, this is the blog, the technical blog that our technical evangelist team are running. I'm going to put that small presentation that I just did, uh, the slides, and the recording. I just recorded myself on autocomfortzone.net. Same thing for the people that were not there this morning. Uh, my presentation from this morning, the recording and the slides, will be available online.